Hello all and welcome to another video by ComScience Simplified. In this week's video, we'll understand public key cryptography, what it is and how it works. Let's get started. Let us first understand what cryptography is. In its most real sense, cryptography deals with encrypting and decrypting digital assets using what we call keys which are actually huge sequences of characters. Operations are performed wherein the data interacts with the keys to create a secure representation of the data, on which the reverse process yields back the data again. That's a little too technical. Let's simplify that. In its most basic sense, here's what it is. Consider that you have a file with you. Encrypting that file is as good as putting it in a box and then putting a lock on top of it. wherein Particular keys are used to lock or unlock that box. That's it. With that understanding in place, let's see how different type of encryptions work. First up is symmetric cryptography. This is the easiest to understand. Let us say Andy has a file which he wants to encrypt and then send to his friend Bob. This is how it can be achieved through symmetric cryptography. Andy puts his document in a box, puts a lock on top of it and then locks it using a key. Bear in mind that Andy needs to share his key with Bob beforehand in order for this to work. When Bob gets the box, he can just open the lock and see the file sent. As no one else has Andy's key except for Bob, his files are protected from everyone else. As Andy and Bob are friends, it is fine for Andy to share his key. But then, what happens in scenarios when Andy is not in a position to share his own key with the recipient of the document? This is where public key cryptography comes in handy. So, what is public key cryptography? In symmetric cryptography, we learned that Andy needed to share his key with everyone if he intended to share his documents with them. Here is an alternative. Andy generates two types of keys. The first one of them is a private key. As the name suggests, this key is only present with Andy and no one else has access to it. The second key that Andy generates is the public key. This one he can share with everyone. So, can make multiple copies of it and literally share it with the entire world. But wait, how is sharing one's public key in any way better than sharing one's key as we did in symmetric cryptography? Let us understand that. The fact that Andy can share his public key with anyone and make encryption work has to do with the way in which public key cryptography encrypts and decrypts the data. Again, it is a complex process that involves a lot of operations between the private and public keys. But let's understand it with an easy analogy. Simply speaking, public key cryptography works like a special kind of lock as shown here. This lock has three states that it can be in. Out of them, two states are locked and one state is unlocked. And here's the interesting part. A private key can only turn this lock in clockwise direction. And a public key can only turn this lock in an anti-clockwise direction. Yes, that is one weird lock. But let's see how it aids us in accomplishing public key cryptography. Here's the lock that we just talked about. Let's say this time Bob wants to send some information to Andy. He follows the usual procedure, takes the file, puts them in a box. Now he puts this weird lock on the box and locks it using Andy's public key that Andy distributed to the whole world like hotcakes. As you can remember, a public key can only turn the lock in anti-clockwise direction. Thus, the lock moves from the U state to the L1 state. This is the encryption part. The file is then sent to Andy and he pulls out his all-powerful private key. Now, this is the only key in the world that can turn the lock in clockwise direction, that is from L1 to U. And hence, Andy is the only person in the world who can open this lock unless he's dumb enough to share his private key with his best friends. Well, there we have a happy ending. Bob has successfully encrypted and shared a file with Andy that only Andy can decrypt. If Andy wanted to share something with Bob, he would repeat the process, but this time encrypt the files using Bob's public key. Sounds great. But wait, there is more to this weird lock's capabilities. Let's explore that as well. So we have the same lock as before. This time, Andy wants to send a file to Bob and he locks the box with his own private key, which he can perfectly do. 
This makes the lock move from state U to state L2. But what is Andy trying to achieve here? Anyways, he sends the file to Bob and then asks him to open the box using Andy's public key that he already has. Bob tries this and he is able to open the lock, that is, turn the lock from position L2 to position U. That's where Bob gets the point. If there was any key in the world that could move the lock from U to L2, it was Andy's private key. Thus, Bob can now be 100% sure that whatever is in the box was put in there by Andy and that nothing has been tampered with. In digital language, this is called signing and verifying. What we saw just now was Andy signing a document with his private key and anyone else receiving the document verifying it was from Andy by unlocking it with his public key. The weird lock is indeed useful, isn't it? That was some basic information that you need to know about cryptography. We learned about private and public keys and how they work. We also learned about public key cryptography and as a bonus we also understood what digital signature is. Hope you liked the video. Give a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to our channel for more such animated tech videos and do check out our other videos as well. We believe you'll love those too. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, happy learning.